pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, that usually comes after. Okay, roll call. Um, Mr. Prokovu and Mr. Bittner are not present tonight. Um, first, uh, oh, public comment. Any public comment? Seeing none. Um, we'll go into our first order of business. Uh, A and R plans. Uh, we've got one for seven eight seven New West Townsend Road. So, it's probably not easy to see on that little map, but 99% of this land is in the city of Fitchburg. Okay. There's a small triangle of land that is, uh, well, it's probably about 1,500 square feet that provides frontage to uh, one of the lots is in the town of Lunenburg. Uh, so, there's a small division of that triangle of land. Uh, it puts like... 50 square feet on one lot and the remainder on another lot. This is this little tiny sliver. Is yeah, this little bit. tiny sliver and there's a little property line that goes through it right there and the sliver extends just a little bit. So, in order to do that, he has an A&R signed by the city of Fitchburg on the remainder of the land and because there's that little portion within the town of Lunenburg, we also need to sign the A&R. Okay. Um... No issues? No, nope. should be no issues because it's... Lot small. size frontage meets in both communities. Right. Uh, so Fitchburg has signed it where they hold the majority of it, and we would just be signing that it's a continuation of an administrative review. So we just need a motion to approve? I would move that we approve the A&R as submitted. Second. Excellent. Um, all in favor? But you're supposed to have asked for a discussion, technically, right? Is there any no. discussion? No. No, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a recording form for the registry of deeds. Okay. So it is the thirteenth. Yes. Please return this to the planning office. Okay. okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Sign those at the end, right? We can. Oh. Oh, the paper one. Yes. Where are the ANRs? Where are the ANRs? I don't know. Well, there's one right here, 64 White Street. Oh, this one, 64. Our next A and R is 292 Chase Road. I don't see any info. Have we seen that already? This is Lonnie Orchards. Let's see. Um, this is the A and R oh. of the okay, design group package. Yes, oh, there we go. this is the division of the commercial property and the houses from the APR land. Uh, it was before the board previously, uh, and actually, no, it never got to the board. It was reviewed previously and turned back due to board of health issues. The board of health has met with the applicant uh, and has said that they are comfortable with the design as it is and are willing and have said that they they don't have any uh, opposition to signing it uh, and that in the future uh, they would need to meet title five regs should they need to update or alter the system but they have authorized uh, the moving forward of the the division so this is going to retain or remain in the ownership of the Lani family they're receiving an uh, APR payment for the rear land 
uh, with the orchards and the cornfields and the pumpkin patch and whatnot. Uh, APR doesn't pay for houses, and at this time they've chosen to remove that commercial structure. Uh, so that will not be part of the APR land. So the APR will be the bulk of the, I think it's 97 or 98 acres. Um, I think it ends up being an APR of like 94 acres uh, with the uh, house property and the, the store property removed. Okay, this is saying the locus is 80.8 .8 and that the APR was 77.1. 7 .1. Okay, then I okay. then I had my no, numbers wrong. Yeah. I didn't understand that they could do the APR before the subdivision. Or that they, they could, can't. They could They're waiting the for the signature of the ANR to right, find so, this so is they haven't been paid it, as of yet. Yes, yeah, so this is just dividing it into A and B so Correct. A can be put into APR. Correct. And could you say something about the garage that's on the APR land? The garage. That's the building I believe you said was going to be removed? No, the commercial the commercial building. They're a little sure. their little stand yeah. out on Chase Road. They're going to have to remove that? No, not, the building doesn't need to be removed. Oh, that property is being removed from what's being ca counted in the APR. Oh, so that's what so that in the future, different. they could do something else on that property. Yeah. Uh, if they included it in the APR, it would have to continue to be associated with retail for the orchard and other agricultural products per the the apr agreement okay yeah. but there's no restriction on having the garage on the apr land. no no you, you can have structures that are associated with agricultural production on apr land okay. um i mean stillman's i think is in apr and they've got cow barns and milk processing and all of that because it's all part of what the, the agricultural products are yeah all right. That looks I accept okay to me. Uh, I move that we approve the uh, ANR's documented. Second. Excellent. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we're cooking with gas. Oh, you got to sign two. Uh oh. Yeah, who's representing the applicant? Sneaky spot. So this is uh, Or I'm not as persnickety about where they put the signature block as previous. Okay. Can I scan it? You certainly may. Thank you. Why don't we do them separate so they stay not getting smeared? Third A and R plan is 164 White Street. That's correct. This is um, a plan that you had divided not two years ago. Uh, this is Alan Foster's property. Um, previously, the land was divided into two lots: um, one that retained the existing house, and one that was proposed to be a buildable lot uh, of extensive size. Uh, Mr. Foster's. Uh, changed his mind and would like to recombine them. So it's it's really a lot line erasure. Uh, where, where was the uh, secondary lot? Uh, it had, so. It doesn't seem to be. Closing it, was, it, was it was lot A. Which, but on the, the left side of that wall, correct? It was on the, if you're looking. Was it that? No. Yeah, it was. I think the edge of the pond is the lot, and it went back and cut across. Um, no, I'm sorry. It was just this little front piece here. Yeah. 
it was it the it was on it was on one side of the impoundment on the corner of um on pearl the corner brook of pearl brook. brook and white street yes and so now that separated by that brook correct now that whole thing will be all part of one lot oh is the outlet stretch okay yeah he retained the the dam as he had historically maintained <coughs> and um was looking for someone to purchase the house that would continue to do so and has decided to retain the house and combine the lots back into one. Okay. I'm somewhat familiar with the property and I thought that little piece behind those two lots on the left of White mm -hmm. Street, I thought that was a separate lot where that little gravel driveway is. I think that it is, but I think it was separate from this A&R. Okay. He's got two lot A's on here, unfortunately. Yeah. I thought the, the division previously created two lots, and that gravel driveway was his, and it was his secondary driveway to this back garage. And he had cut off this lot over on Pearlbrook. So there are two different parcels that say other land of, of Foster. So there's this one. I'm trying to find lot one and lot two on this document. So I don't see them. Parcels, right? So that'd be a third. I see lot A. Correct. So but this one attaches to here. You just sold this So it's actually one parcel. So the parcel comes up here and wraps around. lot one and lot two? Is okay. this lot one and this is lot two? Okay. Right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. The, the palm is separating them. Lot yeah. one and lot two is what's referenced in the plan reference. Oh, okay. Lot A is comprised of two contiguous lots. Lots. Lot, lot one, one and two. Lot one and lot two shown on the plan book, but there's no lot one and lot two designation on this document. Is there another? Oh. Hmm. You know, I think... I think I may have been incorrect. Um, the division actually was lot one was being created and that was you're right this one behind the other two and the house was going over towards from the paved driveway over to Pearl Brook it was intended to go with the house mm -hmm. and lot a was being cut off as its own lot with I, I believe it had the hundred feet of frontage so it sort of ran along that gravel driveway so he's erasing that and retaining. So the bottom line is he's undoing something that he'd previously Correct. done Correct. with us. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. There wouldn't be any frontage issues or anything. Right. Like that. No. I mean, it, it, it's never <laughs> really an issue to combine. What's that? It's never really an issue to combine, right? By no, it's not. No. So, division? So. Inle unless you're taking land from someone else. Right. And then it's a matter of whether or not they... But it's all under his ownership. The Correct. Property this, records yes. in the back show. This is a ra essentially, your, it's erasing a lot line that he had created previously. Okay. Uh, I move that we approve the A&R. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I didn't recognize it. That's the we ran out of cups, so we took it from our yeah. other shop logo. <laughs> when, when you get Zetas. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up our items, agenda items. Um, the um, wraps up your A and R. Oh, that the A and R. Yeah. So we have a site plan approval for a waiver request. Yep. Thirty nine Mass Ave. Do you want to come up and tell them about it? Yeah, just state your name and your address. For the uh, Robert D. from D-Bus Service. It's and uh, we purchased 39 Massive. 
and would just like a waiver to extend our parking lot, pave a little bit more of the parking area there to park more buses for the to service the town of Lunenburg with. So I'm assuming the waiver is increase in pervious? Well, he's asked um, to consider the paving as a uh, waiver. Uh, I believe when we spoke, you had talked about uh, f yeah, 40 by 50 feet, so you know a, a fairly minimal increase in the impervious area adjacent to an existing impervious. Um, so he's asking for a waiver from the public hearing requirements and the, the filing requirements in order to pave that small strip. And are there, are there any, any other issues that we should be thinking of? I mean, as far as um, total lot impervious? Uh, no, there's there's drainage. no, I mean, obviously drainage is always an issue. Uh, it's a 200 square foot total uh, per the, the request. Uh, the board could condition uh, whatever they wish as part of the, the waiver. Uh, you probably know better than I. There are a multitude of solutions that could be easily done that don't need to be engineered that would handle the runoff that would come off of a 40 by 50 strip of pavement to be able to park a couple more buses. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's an infiltration trench with gravel, whether it's a grass swale, uh, any of those things can be done to uh, reasonably negate the the runoff issue but i don't think if what is in the front right now between the paved hard area packed and the gravel oh, it's, it's a i mean or dirt well it's a yeah he's got a planting bed right it's along planting the road bed? Yeah. yeah oh along the road yeah yeah so does the would the planting bed serve as an adequate uh water infiltration for that additional pavement i mean basically we're turning 100 percent of the lot into paved surface or well, i don't believe you're looking to pave that whole dirt area are you I don't know what you're... Uh, we're looking at the, the aerial. So... That brown area is currently dirt and is, is larger than 40 feet. Right. Um, or no, 50 I wanna, feet. I would love to pave it all. <laughs> Not right at the moment, but no, we only come over... It's about... Two bus widths. Three bus widths over and then in. And then... So you... How long is a bus? 40 feet long. All right, so this is 40 by 50. Mm -hmm. Actually, a uh, bark mulch. Oh, okay. Towards the road, it's probably like 20, it comes in 20 feet, 20 mm -hmm. feet from the road of bark mulch. So there's no storm sewage in that area. Correct. So we're looking at just a rough in sizing. We're looking at something of this nature. Let me just take a look at this. And Tell me if my drawing is accurate of what you're talking about paving. Yeah, I mean, if you scale it off with the three buses I that are there. scale it off with the buses. Yeah. And this is what I get. Yeah, you guys are about the same, just in different directions. Right. Yeah. So are you going to, uh, are, are you planning on putting pavement all the way to the property line on either side? Or is it, is the... Just asking, but are you going to continue a, a buffer strip here and here, or is this going to go all the way to this property line, or what was your plan there? Well, off the property line, uh, probably like 10 feet off, 15 feet off the property line. All right, so, so there will be a 15-foot non-paved buffer yeah. between the property line and the pavement. Yeah, I think that's approximately what it is. Nice job on the landscaping. Oh, thank you. It's coming along. <laughs> He's already put a retaining wall. Yeah, on yeah. There's a light, the small side. retaining wall. Oh, okay. the property lines. Oh, nice. Kind of cleaned up mess, sort of. I was, was going to take a picture and bring it with me, but I didn't yep. quite have the time to. And the grade there changes just pretty based on what's that? It changes a little bit, doesn't it? Well, it's flatter in that area. So as far yes. as runoff goes, it, it, the rest of the lot kind of runs down towards the marina, but right. that particular area is pretty flat. Mm -hmm. And I know into the. So right to the right side well if you're looking at the building the end there is some drainage down in the corner of the at the end of the building okay so you, you're just asking for a waiver from site plan approval because in the site plan bylaw it says if you extend alter modify a parking lot outside of regular maintenance 
it requires site plan approval. Oh, so pay without it. In in the instance of Asian Imperial, where they created a significant addition to their parking lot, yeah. that was a you know that was something that that needed that full site plan approval. Uh, you know, I. I wouldn't say that you couldn't make an argument that something like this may need that. Uh, I think that this is an instance where considering the waiver is something that was reasonable um, to suggest to Mr. D because, again, it's a 200 square feet on a you know, two and a half acre parcel that already has you know 70 percent impervious you're not the percentage impervious increase and the ability to mitigate that increase would be fairly easily done without a significant amount of engineering all right so I, I'm okay with this but Matthew I'll defer to you on what you would recommend for um, some kind of mitigation whether that's a, a trench surrounding the newly paved area or some kind of a swale or well I think as far as mitigation as long as the new paved surface pitched noticeably to the or at least pitched towards to the impervious areas because like i said there's no street drainage in that area and um so any excess runoff would be captured by the road because it mm -hmm. it does pitch towards the road in that area um or it may pitch to, it also pitches towards the um the adjacent lots too towards fitchburg so it's gonna say there's curbage going along the road is there a curb there? Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. A, along the whole road. Well, that whole curb. landscape area. The whole landscape area is all curbed. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, maybe even maybe it would be unreasonable to have a speed bump there to make sure that none of that water came in. Like a berm like on the on the street side. No, the, um, on the page, on the portion oh, that doesn't have a curb. So put a berm on the edges of the pavement that. That where does, it crosses from pavement to gravel. That does seem a little unreasonable. Mm. Driving a bus over a speed bump every time you want to park. Yeah, I don't think you want to do that. Oh. Yeah, I think having it pitched as practicably as possible towards the rear of the lot makes the most sense. Yeah. Well, towards the rear of the lot, I was thinking towards the existing landscaped area. Oh. The landscaped area to be retained because that In way it can front, infiltrate. Yeah. Which is what it does anyway. Right. Um, Are you planning on landscaping that area in general? Uh, it's pretty much all landscape. Oh, the bark mulch area? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's all landscaped. Would you be interested in putting in a rain garden? Which is basically just a hole in the ground with some vegetation. Whereabouts? Uh, I'm also on the stormwater task force, and <laughs> and we're having to file our notice of intent for the town, and our and our stormwater management plan, uh -huh. and our MS4, um, and this I'm sure is regulated area. Um, it's it's basically just a ditch with with vegetation. Um, I, it, give, given the input that is it such a negligible increase, um, I'm inclined to say just pitching it towards the landscaped area would be adequate. Okay. And it already has plantings, right? And if somebody else would like to weigh well, in. Well, the, the back side is now a retaining wall. Yeah. And then the side, so the side it So towards, this is a retaining wall right here? Yeah, towards Aubuchon. Yeah, it was a hill coming down. Okay. And then the side along Mass Ave, there's an elevated landscaped area. So there's no way the water's coming out into the road there. Yeah. The Which road is elevation's higher than what he's looking to pave there. Um, and it is pretty flat. I yes, mean, I didn't. And I don't remember. I am walk it, but just I mean, I've seen it. pooling over no. towards up the road a little bit, but I've never seen any ponding in the road here. No, no. no. So I think in the whole scheme of things, it's it should work out all right. Now there's still a fence from like the corner of the building towards Abishan. Yes. I'm going to move that fence over. Okay. So the, all the buses will be in the fence. Okay. And then at the top of our wall, I was going to put like a post and beam fence up there just to keep okay. people from. Yeah, like split rail or something. Yeah, split rail. Yeah. You mean any further comments? Okay, so um, I, I can make a motion that we uh, accept the. Uh, Accept the uh, request for a waiver. 
do we want to put any kind of uh, restriction on it? We want to say that it, it's fine considering it's such a small improvement. Well, my, my, my thought on the con condition would be that it pitched towards the landscaped area, the new pavement. I mean, you can make your All waiver right. based on the condition that it does that. All right, so I, I would move that we approve the, uh, the waiver as requested um, and um, add a restriction that uh, the new paved area should be pitched towards the existing landscape area to not add to the, the water that's already collecting on the existing impervious surface. Second. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent, thank you. So you're new in town? No, we've been renting there for years. Okay. We just purchased the building a couple months ago. Very good. I just came from a, a, a near to kickoff meeting from the Lunenburg Business Association, newly formed in town. Yep. Great. Now that, uh, is that whole lot part of this building ownership? Including where the boats are parked? Is that it's two different lots. So two separate lots? Yeah. We purchased both lots as one, but it's two separate lots. Oh, ah, okay. Super. Do I need anything from you guys? No, we'll send you. We'll send you a letter, um, but you can go forth and pay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. It. All right. Minutes approval. So I believe I came in to look at these. Yes. Well, those are the those oh. are the regular meeting minutes. Oh, okay, but I came in. So those are the same as probably shared with us and printed in. Yes. Package. Okay. So has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes of July 9th? Mm -hmm. Yes. We now have to move and vote on minutes again, right? Yep. I move that we approve the minutes from uh, 7918. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then have we all had an opportunity to review the executive session minutes? I have. Do you have, do you have, have one? I move that we approve the 7918 executive minutes. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, um, committee reports. Um, community, green communities was Greg. Um, capital planning has not met. Stormwater task force, we had a very short meeting with Mr. Himlin, our uh, wetlands um, consultant, and to go over the, uh, the basically just the changing of the dates on the notice of intent because of the, the year delay. So basically it was just changing the dates on the form. Um, I don't believe any of the content changed and I believe that that was forwarded off um, for review by the selectmen and eventually to be signed hopefully by the town manager. Um, so that was that. Agricultural Commission, uh, we were not able to meet last meeting due to lack of quorum. Um, we. The Agricultural Commission sponsored the last band concert of the season uh, on July 30th. Um, it was a very successful turnout. Uh, we managed to gain $464 to donate to the, uh, to benefit the 4-H in town. And I believe there are four different groups of 4-H. Um, and the farmer's market continues to, um, to go move on well um we had some issues with the weather last sunday um <laughs> yesterday um it was a slow turnout um we had a good turnout of the vendors um just not a lot of people willing to come out and plus the bolton fair was last weekend too so yeah uh, i don't think that they did very good either but we have had an increase in um in vendors i believe there's there was 12 the uh, week before that so we're moving right along with that as well and when does that run until, Matthew? That runs until the end of October, okay. I think the 24th. Thanks. And um, MJTC? 
MJTC, boy, we're packed. We had two meetings uh, since uh, our last opportunity to talk about the MJTC. Uh, we had a meeting on July 11th, and we had a meeting on August 8th. Uh, in the July 11th meeting, um, we went over the uh, the, the TIP uh, amendment, uh, and there was some confusion about the, uh, the the numbers because they just didn't add up, and the presentation didn't match the paperwork. And so uh, we did actually request that they uh, they redo it and uh, republish for comment. Uh, but they went back and, and looked at the numbers and found that they had just created the presentation material from an old version. And the new version was actually up to date. So what was presented at the meeting was different than what actually went out for review. So we, we let that one go. Uh, they also presented a, a roadway safety improvement uh, report. It was a presentation and discussion. Um, provided we provided feedback that the data that they're basing their decision on is old data uh, and recommended that they uh, change their uh, their approach in presenting the data such that they take into consideration the date of the data um, so that uh, you take into consideration what projects took place since the data was collected so like they will have a, a high safety area that has since had a traffic light put in, but they still will show that as a high safety area from the report um, and and qualify it for additional funding, even though it's already been addressed. So we just requested that they, they put some compensation into the report for that. Um, and um, the uh, DOT is putting out a new trail guide in October, so the town has an opportunity to send trail updates to get into the guide. Um, so, and I know the Conservation Commission has been working with them on, right. on getting trail data in there for. Yeah, so it'll be nice because last uh, last time we had some trails in there, but a lot of them were not in there, and so we just had these incontiguous lines where there should have been contiguous lines. There's a member actually out riding the trails with GPS to That's awesome. get them in. Uh, in the August 8th meeting, um, we uh, elected uh, our new officials. Paula Bertram uh, was elected for the vice chair uh, position for the MJTC. Um, so that was great. Uh, and they presented uh, results of a uh, South, um, Miriam Avenue South Street bottleneck study. It was just an update on the study that they're doing because this is the the bridge up by Twin City Plaza, up by where Bob's is mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, apparently, during the daytime hours, that is backed up uh, significantly. It's a, a pretty bad area. So they're, they're looking at what can be done, uh, but... Uh, the, the biggest challenge that they have there is that bridge is limited to two lanes mm -hmm. and there's nothing they can do to rectify that. Um, so I'm not sure what they'll be able to do to, to address it. But anyway, there there's a study going on uh, for that and they'll be providing us updates on it in, in months to come. That was it, next meeting is in September. Right. <coughs> Open space? Uh, oh, that's Steve, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think the next one, uh, no, MRPC, is that also Dave? Yep. I attended the August 2nd meeting. Uh, a lot of the meeting revolved around issues that they've had with some grants that they're administering for uh, Wingenin. Um They're going through a bit of a reorganization. They've lost a few of their staff, um, and so they're a little bit short-staffed right now. Um, but we are working on that permitting guidebook um, as well as the Lunenburg Business Partnership um, materials that they're helping with. So looking forward to getting that stuff underway. Nice. So. Excellent. Next meetings, September. Okay. Oh, and also the next meeting of the Agricultural Commission is this Thursday. Um, so have we had any input on the uh, Charter Review Committee? I have not seen any reports. I, d I don't believe they've met, but I have not received any updates. <coughs> I don't believe that the person in the audience is a part of that committee any longer. Oh. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, moving right along to director's items. Okay, we're going to go backwards because I'm feeling crazy tonight. Okay. Um, okay, actually, we're going to start in the middle. Mm -hmm. We'll do the open space ad hoc committee. Uh, you remember... The last time, no, I guess it was two meetings ago, uh, the board voted to increase membership 
to seven members, mm -hmm. uh, adding a member of the rec committee and a member at large. We've received a single talent bank application uh, from Sarah Kammer to fill the uh, vacancy at large. Uh, Sarah served on the stormwater task force previously. Uh, she has a PhD in some manner of environmental science, uh, is an educator, and has uh, extensive mapping uh, experience. GIS. Yes. Yeah. And she has worked, uh, as I said, with the she's worked in consulting and with the stormwater task force on some mapping and uh, phone application materials. Uh, she's been attending uh, open space meetings and would like to put herself forward to fill that vacant seat. Uh, so it's up to this board as the open space ad hoc as a subcommittee of the planning board to appoint open uh, seats that are not committee specific. So I guess I put Sarah forward as the only candidate who has uh, responded to the advertisement for said vacancy. And I will add that, as Adam mentioned, she was a previous Stormwater Task Force member, and um, her membership there, uh, her, participa her participa participation was excellent. Her input was excellent. She was a very uh, friendly and open person to work with. Um, I think she would make a great addition to the Open Space Ad Hoc Committee. Can I nominate her, or do we need a nominator? Someone needs to nominate her. Can, I, can the chair, or the acting chair? I mean, I would take it's, it, it's unusual, but it's not illegal. I'll nominate, illegal. Uh, I'll nominate the, uh, the the member that uh, submitted. Sarah Cameron. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah what? Sarah Cameron. 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 Yeah. Second. Excellent. Um, All those in favor? All those discussion. In? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Welcome back, Sarah. Hmm. All right, then I guess we'll go to marijuana. Ooh. Okay. So, um, this is where it gets complicated. Um, in speaking with the town clerk, uh, the marijuana prohibition is not allowed to be placed on the statewide ballot. It needs to be on a local ballot. So it would need to be on a May ballot because it's a local initiative. So there's oh. a couple of ways that this could be attacked. Uh, I guess more than a couple, but uh, if, if the board wishes to continue with the bifurcated approach, they can just put a moratorium on for special town meeting with the intent that the prohibition bylaw and ballot initiative be held in close proximity in May at annual town meeting and at annual elections. Uh, and the regulations would be done for annual town meeting. They could move forward with the prohibition bylaw and regulation bylaw at special town meeting in the fall with the moratorium kicker in case things go pear-shaped during that meeting. Uh, and that would mean that we would have something on the books, and then we would be waiting until May for the vote to certify the prohibition. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't had a chance to check in with council on uh, how that would affect what happens. So if you, let's say we pass the prohibition and we pass the regulations, because the prohibition isn't valid until the vote, uh, would we be subject to the regulations in the interim between mm -hmm. November and May? I would anticipate that we would be, uh, and anything that gets permitted under that would then become pre-existing non-conforming per the prohibition if, it's, if it is um, supported at a ballot in May. Or, or we could extend, extend till the following May. That was the that was the, that was option one. Is is um, extend the moratorium yeah. through to May. Spend the winter doing the regulations and getting the prohibition set for the ballot, and then just do it all at one special town meet or one annual town meeting. Yeah. 
I think that makes the most sense. I do it, too. It's Because otherwise it's going to be really complicated having a set of bylaws that are active for a short period of time until we come up to an election to be really interesting them. though. <laughs> well, it also gives us time to we're, we're covered. We're not we're not <clears throat> open, and then it gives us more time to craft this bylaw. Yeah. Given that um, given that this regulation prevents us from holding this at the election we were planning. Mm -hmm. right? The, the, does I, that permit us? To I think the more I don't. The moratorium I think the moratorium will be okay. Okay. I, and I, you know, I think that the attorney general has supported extending moratoriums into June of next year. Uh, is very cautious about extending them any further. Uh, and I think that the logic behind the extension of the moratorium will hold up because. Uh, the pursuit of prohibition requires the voting, and uh, I think that there's, excuse me, I don't feel as if I've heard a real middle of the road uh, strong contingent. It's, hey, let's get pot selling here in Lunenburg, or get that stuff away from us. We don't want it anywhere near town. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not kind of like, oh, hey, it'll be fine. You know, everything will work out. Let's just, you know, make, make it work. Um, there's not a lot of that voice coming Well, we out. hear that voice, but it's the people that want it. it, it, it <laughs> well, it is, but I, I, but I think that those people tend to be stronger on the, let's just get it going, let's do the regulations and allow it, um, or don't, don't let any of the businesses in town. And, you know, the reality is maybe there is a strong middle of the road, but those are the people who aren't engaged or aren't speaking. Um, so I think that we have a reasonable extension of the moratorium. Agreed. And then plus the two things that have to be agreed upon at the meeting and the, and the voting would be closer in proximity. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're getting a, a, a potential to engage more people. My one concern, uh, and, and I don't think that this is uh, necessarily marijuana related but it's it's paralysis by analysis is the more time that we spend delving into this and trying to get input uh, we th spin ourselves up so we think about oh what, no, what about this and what about that and I, I think it's important to just kind of try and rein all that in and focus on this is where we want to get to here's the things that we need to look at and not allow ourselves to be stretched trying to think of every conceivable scenario because we're never going to yeah. can we put the um, hmm. is there a way that we can use the town meeting to help in predetermining what the following town meeting results will be such that we could present the option that is going to be coming up for a vote mm -hmm. to get a straw poll or something from the audience. I'm sure there's something that we can do. That we could get, because if town meeting overwhelmingly votes against it, then it's probably not worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. Because town meeting A and town meeting B are likely going to be 90% of the same people there because every town meeting I've been to, it's been <laughs> for the most part. You know, I think I think that logic works because mostly. My only my only pause on that would be if there's a significant engagement that happens somewhere between December and April, and there's a new pot of people who are for or against and they show up in droves to an open town meeting you I, I think you risk yeah, you, could, you, you could risk a flaw by not putting the prohibition on regardless of what if if it bombs in November and you say well, well then we don't need to pursue the prohibition bylaw you create a, a potential vacuum where everyone shows up and votes down the regulations. Maybe there's a strong anti-contingent that can rally. And if, if they don't have the option to prohibit one form of it, they just vote down all regulations. I'm not saying that we would abandon putting it on the ballot. I'm just saying that it would give us an indication Okay. the uh, town meeting, which way the town meeting people are swaying. That's fine. I, and I think that's reasonable. I don't that's think reasonable. that we got a very good assessment from our um, from the monkey yeah I no I, I i mean very accurate i'd much rather get a straw poll at a town meeting sure to get a feeling and if there's overwhelming response one way or the other 
then and if it's split right down the middle that tells us something too sure uh, but if it's overwhelming one way or the other then that gives us a stronger indication than we get plus we we get to have discussion about things that we couldn't discuss in the survey mm -hmm. like like how people feel about certain aspects of it versus yeah. other aspects of it and maybe clarify zoning concerns where it seemed like some people might not have understood what the zoning differences meant I think that works all right all right so uh, our thought process is we're going to town meeting just for a moratorium for the moratorium period. and maybe for a non-binding question of some yeah. manner yeah just uh, to see what the feeling just is. to create some yeah. topic of discussion and in parallel to that we should be working on the actual regulation Co oh, correct yeah and, and, and i think one, that one thought i had on the regulations is i mean as we move forward we now have essentially six uses if you count the five non-medical plus medical mm -hmm. marijuana if we could set time aside in a meeting to address just one use and say you know tonight we're going to talk about retail and that's it and we just develop the retail stuff and then whether it's you know craft or sure. uh, cultivation or whatever just for simplicity pur purposes and i also feel like it would help people in town that are concerned about it come to a meeting it's on the agenda if you're concerned about retail and you don't want to have a marijuana shop in the center of town then come to this meeting and you know that way we can kind of focus the feedback from the community and focus our mm -hmm. efforts and it's not all not yeah, have meetings that last around. till 11 o'clock at night because we're trying to tackle too much mm -hmm. um, i agree i think it's so. a great idea yeah yeah all right so we got open space we did pot um Try town we can endorse those plans after the meeting uh, when you guys have to sign the rest of your life away. Um, sign by law. You guys had asked to see what we had talked about previously. And this came up back, must be back in the winter. And so on the second to last page, Sorry, third to last page. Under F, number four is the amendment that I crafted in response to the discussion about um, commercial properties being permitted a single uh, freestanding sign without need for site plan approval. I think we had talked about 12 square feet uh, with no less than a one to three ratio between the perpendicular sides. So you're not going to get a really long, skinny sign. You're going to get something that's appreciably a rectangle. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, it can't be more than 25. It, it's got to be at least 25 feet from the road and 20 feet from the sideline. Uh, and then it can't be uh, illuminated. Internally, externally, period? At all. At all. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the by right sign, right? Yeah, that would be allow. And then, you know, you go back to the standard stuff in the in the bylaw for for site plan approval. And you so, get approved, yeah. Correct. If somebody wants a larger sign or a lighted, or a lighted sign, sign or right? yeah. So you could put up a sign that's not lighted under this, and then come back and just get approval to get it lighted. Correct. Yeah. The only concern I'd have about the 25 feet from the front property line is I know in certain areas in town that front lot line is back quite a ways. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just using a property I own as an example, our garage, which is the old Sozik garage, the split rail fence that goes along the road is the property mm -hmm. line. So 25 feet in, I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the middle of your park off lot, yeah. the pavement at that point. Yeah. And so I, I know the, the thought process is we want to make sure we can allow people to put a sign up without interfering with lines of sight and mm -hmm. accessing a property. But yeah, so should it be 25 feet from the, from the pavement edge? Well, I think, the intent? I think if you look at the bylaw, um, the, the signs that would go by site plan are 20 feet from the property line. So you're, you're not 
gaining anything by even coming in under site plan you're still you're you're 35 feet from the, the edge of pavement instead of 40 but you're yeah. still you're still a ways back and the only way to get relief from that is to go to the zoning board of appeals for a special permit dimensional variation okay. um, so unless we change the in the, well unless we yeah unless we delve deeper and, and this needs more work than than this yeah. one section this was sort of a band-aid to correct a, you know one thing Again, right yeah. now and being by right adding that extra feet uh, the extra five feet someone who's putting a sign like this in probably isn't going to go and hire a surveyor yeah um, they're going to go and they're going to uh, my property yeah, line's about, about here. here get me yeah. get me the tape measure johnny yeah. and yeah. and they're going to put the 25 feet down and they're going to say look it's perfect <laughs> yeah uh looks and good you know if the building inspector is comfortable with that i think that's fine it's more of a you know making sure it's not you know not saying it's five feet off the property line and having it actually be in the right of way or, or something to that effect yeah. where it creates a safety hazard yeah this I, I was just like looking at other references here like if you look on the previous page subsection two it references 20 feet from the right of way, not Correct. 20 feet from the property line. The right of way is the property line. The same thing. Yeah. Oh, it's the same thing? Yeah. yeah. So, so the right of way is the uh, lot okay, within, so within the lot with, which in the road well, resides. Okay, so at the very least, can we reduce it from 25 down to 20 so at least sure. it's the same? I, I was trying to be conservative on the by right just to... I, I think it's still pretty doggone far away from the road. But at least it's a little bit better. But yeah. Well, in the thought process too is, it's a small sign. So yeah. It. How much damage can it do? <laughs> well, until it's it doesn't branded. obscure as much of a view. <laughs> yeah. So, so. And so that will go on for fall town meeting if the board so chooses. And I think that we should put that off until we have a full member. Or something like that. Okay. Any discussion about that? No, I can just time. carry it on to the next yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah, we've got time. I mean, I, sure. I, I can go on to town meeting. Yeah, it's, it's easy and enough to put on to town yeah. meeting, and sure. it's all right. So just yeah, you, know, you mentioned that. Yeah. We all thought it was fine at twenty feet, and get the other. You can mention it. Pardon? I so said you can mention it because he I'll now be wants to do it when the full board is here. Right. Or well, I won't you, be. I won't you, be here for that. You're not going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the last thing is earth removal. So tomorrow night, the selectmen are having uh, a workshop on dumping the earth removal on you guys, uh, mostly at my suggestion, because I think. Well, I, I think these permits. Are, are much more in the wheelhouse of what the planning board does than than what the selectmen do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so, you know, maybe 18 months ago or so, I suggested to them that uh, ultimately it might be worth it for those to make their way over here, uh, especially since oftentimes projects permitted by the planning board are exempt from earth removal, uh, and so it, it eliminates some of that confusion back and forth uh, you guys look at these kind of plans all the time you understand about his concerns mitigation measures that kind of stuff uh, so I gave you tonight some a draft bylaw and some draft regulations uh, I don't expect any real discussion on this um, this is more I threw something together that I thought uh, cleaned up some of the foibles of our current bylaw, uh, added in some. This is the current one right here, right? No, that's the one that I put together. This one. Yes. Uh, this, is, yeah. this is this is regulations that would go with the bylaw, so it would be a multi-tiered approach. Oh, so, so this is all new. Correct. Okay. Um, I added earth fill into the bylaw because that's potentially a huge issue uh, as far as people bring in fill uh, how they put it where they put it mm -hmm. how much of it they put uh, where it came from uh, all that kind of stuff uh, and I, I think you guys are probably used to this by now uh, the two of you have been on the board for a while and, and Tanner you'll start to get used to this I don't like to put a lot of you have to give us this in the bylaw because what we want can change 
and changing the bylaw to change that is kind of a pain. Uh, so I like to pack a set of regulations on the back end uh, saying here's the documents we want, here's how they get to us, uh, and that way if we do this for a year and we're like, you know what, we never use this one thing that we get, let's get rid of it, we really need this other thing, you can hold a public hearing to amend what you request from the documents, but it's still all within the bounds of, of meeting the requirements of the bylaw. Okay. Uh, so the bylaw you know, says, here's what you have to do, here's why you have to do it, here's what we're trying to do, here's the parameters with which we're doing it in, and then the regulations say, and we want 12 copies of this plan that shows these things to show us why you meet these, regula th these aspects of the bylaw. Um, they need to come in at this time, here's what the standards for restoration are, oh, those standards aren't working, or are you know excessive or, or unhelpful or you know need to be changed okay let's change those to meet what you know what makes sense uh, as I said these are drafts no one I, they went to the selectmen today I think I don't know if I don't know if the selectmen got them I sent them over to the town manager uh, late this afternoon and said here you go this is for tomorrow um, if, if this changes great if it doesn't great it's just it's sort of a place to start talking um, and it, it's really just to try and move the conversation forward because I, I feel like in the last probably 18 months the selectmen have said you know what we've got earth removal happening in town and we need to really get a handle on it uh, I think they've been relying on the building commissioner to do annual reviews for a long time uh, and those annual reviews have resulted in permits just being renewed and renewed and renewed and I think they're being a little bit more uh, fastidious about their uh, review of the, the current permits and what the end game is for those permits and, and how they get exercised. Now is there a trigger point for this in other words yeah I've got a thousand cubic yards in there as the okay. as the trigger point for removal or, or uh, right now it's 10 which is you know if you take a dumper full of dirt out of somewhere you technically need an earth removal permit um, ten which, single yards not 10,000 yards no 10 cubic yards <laughs> that that's what the current bylaw says I mean so okay. and you know there are some exemptions for stuff associated with a building permit mm -hmm. or a subdivision or uh, but you know that's I think it's a bit draconian uh, and I think that really what uh, what I tried to get down to too and I don't remember if I put it in the bylaw or the regulations is we have permits that have been issued for 60 plus years at this mm -hmm. point um, you know up front tell us how much material do you really have? Where are you going to excavate? How long do you anticipate excavating? Um, and, and, you know, can you necessarily nail that all down the first time you come in for a permit? No, but you can come in with a, a thought and, a, and an estimate, and as you renew permits, you, you start to get a better idea, and you can start to really refine that, and, uh, and I think that's sort of the direction the selectmen have started trying to move, uh, and I think tomorrow's meeting is, is one to sort of talk about, you know, a proposal like this with the planning board taking over earth removal, and I think some of it is... Uh, if the planning board takes it over, what does that look like? And, and what's the impact on existing operations as the approving authority shifts and as you know the personalities involved with it shift and, and the, the institutional knowledge and all, all that kind of stuff? Uh, so I, you know, I think that there's, there's some work to be done. Uh, I anticipate the selectmen in the next you know, three or four months will probably renew uh, or close out any existing permits uh, so they would be uh, renewed until next August so this isn't something that's going to happen you know out of the gate right away uh, but I would anticipate to see something like this bouncing around at an annual town meeting uh, with the planning board you know hitting the ground running as as fall rolls around so the intent is to publish this, get it adopted, and then get existing businesses to comply? 
Yeah, the <laughs> their permit renew. Well, the way that I I, I kind of wrote it was that existing businesses I mean, some pretty there's some pretty high bars. Yeah, I, you know I, I have them in there as three year permits instead of one year permits. Uh, I think that that just makes a little bit more sense. Um, coming back every year can seem daunting, uh, and, and continuation of existing permits allows them to continue under their current permit for a period of, I think it's, you know, three years. And at that point, they come back for a renewal of not more than two years. Uh, and so within that three-year period, they'd be notified that this is now in place and, and you need to start moving into compliance with the requirements in here and giving them that buffer to do so in mm -hmm. uh, and not just spring it on them like, oh, surprise, you're coming in next month, here's a new bylaw you have to comply with, uh, but looking to ease them into it. And, you know, earth removal permits, it, it, it's not like a building permit. People don't come in and just get them. Uh, these are usually fairly large operations or uh, people who are starting to do something that would be a fairly large operation. Uh, you know, Keating is our probably one of our largest landowners, uh, and they have more land and more earth that they could remove than I think any of us would see in a lifetime still. Hmm. Uh, so... I don't believe that they would be going anywhere, uh, but this would sort of give the town a better handle on on what it's going to look like as they move forward and, and how things might work. Gotcha. Yeah. So, question: Who who be like the last one that I remember is the uh, Butterfly Lane off Elmwood Road. Yep. That was that was something that was allowed that was permitted through planning, mm -hmm. and they had to go and get an earth removal permit. They did not. They should have, though. No, they should not have. No? Because under the current bylaw, they are exempt because the removal of their earth Absolutely. was in conjunction with the approval of the subdivision and was preparation of the site for the construction of that road and appurtenant houses. Which is essentially a loophole in the bylaw. Right. We all it's guess. not a loophole in the bylaw. It's, it's actually, there's case law for it. Right. In, the, yeah. in which... If you are removing earth mm -hmm. as preparation for the use of the site in a reasonable period of time, mm -hmm. it's not an earth removal operation. Uh, even if you process and sell that earth, the intent of that removal is not the earth removal operation, it's the preparation of site. Exactly, but there's nothing binding to have, actually have you finish the site development, and therefore you can skip out on the earth removal permit by creating a, a, a site and getting it approved and then remove all the all the, the material and then just abandon the project and then you bypass. I, I guess in theory, but I mean the, the argument against that it would is a be... It I mean, There was a lot of discussion about it back when well, we were talking about that. When project. they per permitted Butterfly Lane, I would venture to guess he probably spent 75000 to a hundred thousand dollars in engineering so you're not really saving any money spending that much to permit a subdivision and then to remove the earth and not build the subdivision because if you were going to permit an earth removal operation you'd probably spend half of that because you're just permitting how much earth do i have what am i going to do with it afterwards i'm trucking it off you don't have to design a road you don't have to design drainage all that kind of stuff so it, I don't know that it it's something that someone would go through the exercise of spending that kind of money to to design a project to permit, never mind going through the hassle of permitting. Now, I, I if I recall correctly, his permitting was pretty easy, uh, mostly because it's a straight dead-end road on right, yeah. a giant pile of gravel, so there's not a lot to really talk about. But uh, it, on a more complicated side, I, I, it doesn't seem like that would be... and. You know, if you permit a subdivision and you take 10 years to remove the earth that it takes to prepare the site, then you get into an area where, okay, maybe that is an earth removal operation that will ultimately be a subdivision, as opposed to, I think he cleared that site in six months. Yeah, I wasn't singling out that. Site. No, and I don't I think, I don't think you are. I'm trying to draw a was, comparison. But I was purely stating that the way that the bylaw is written is you, you can, you can bypass. I guess in theory, yeah. yeah. The only concern I would have is is setting this up in such a way that it doesn't become burdensome for 
a lot of the smaller scope projects mm -hmm. like septic systems. I mean, uh, that's Title one of those five, ones that's exempt. Okay. Right. You you know, and, and there's a series of exemptions and, you know, septic systems is one of those ones that how can you force someone to get an earth removal permit when they have to have a septic system? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that uh, take a look through it. And, you know, there's a, there's I, I understand a lot of those concerns and exemptions. and there's a whole set of exemptions for stuff, you know, under Title five and no. stuff that's in the floodplain. Uh, section of the bylaw, uh, stuff that, that would appreciably make sense. So what about the case where people have material delivered onto site and then sell it from the site? That's yeah. not earth removal. That's retail. Okay. That is, so I mean, you're, you're, you're putting soil earth and then you're removing earth from the site, but that's and, and I mean, I guess we could, we could talk about that. I, I, Usually, when you think of earth fill, you're changing the elevation or grade of the site. Right. So you're bringing it in, you're dumping it, and spreading it. Uh, if you're filling a bin with loom, and then your customers are coming in and taking that loom out, that I, that to me is an earth fill. That's someone delivering a product. So then, shouldn't it say naturally existing somewhere? In and again, you know, again. Oh, let's, we'll go. We'll go yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure I have more. I'm sure, and like I said, I you know I didn't expect there to be a big discussion about this, mostly because I, I dropped them on your seats before the meeting. Uh, and that's what I've got. Very good. You got your notices and communication scanned to you. Yep. Meeting schedule. Yep. So we have uh, 994 Northfield will be coming back at our next meeting. Um, all of you should make every effort to attend. No going to Kazakhstan or Kazan or wherever you might go. I'm trying to avoid that trip at all costs. <laughs> it's occurring in September, but I'm pretty sure I don't have to go now. And then September and, and September are both fairly open right now. Oh, and I, I meant to send an email out. I will be out of the office next week, so if you have questions about solar and stuff, get me before Thursday. All right. Very good. So then, um, is there any public comment? No, wait. I'm sorry. On the meeting schedule, there was some kind of a special meeting that was supposed to take place on another night, is that? Oh, no. There was discussion about that. I, I don't think that's going to happen. happen. Okay. Um, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Hmm. My apologies. You're still public. <laughs> okay. <laughs> valid point. <laughs> Any public comment? Seeing none. Uh, the ongoing items? So Asian Imperial. Um, I did speak with the DBW director, and I think what he's looking for is a letter from the planning board outlining that um, the remaining driveway apron uh, is not something the board wishes uh, to retain and that it was not part of the site plan approval. Uh, and then he can... Uh, we can I can inform the property owner that he'll be that I'll be working with him to resolve the situation and then he'll come up with a solution so is the board okay with that as the the course of action this is the little strip that people are parking on and yes. backing into yeah. uh, the yeah. highway yeah yeah, yeah that, that sounds reasonable to me okay yeah, yeah. they're just gonna put some I assume they're just going to put something to block that off. That would be my inference. Yeah. Uh, either a decorative guardrail or something to that effect. Yeah. It would be nice if they rip it up, just give them some more impervious. But you know, what? It's no sense spending a lot of money on the. It's the town, town so. property. Is that? It mm -hmm. is. It's in the right of way, and I think the concern is um, that's a DOT controlled portion of the intersection. Okay. And so. Once they remove that, does it affect the integrity of the edge of road? And do they get into a battle of wills with DOT over who then needs to re fix that? And oh, maybe they could saw they could, cut it. I was saying they could cut it and leave a foot. Yeah, or two. Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah. yeah, there's definitely ways around that. Um, didn't to not have to worry about that. But. Let Jack make that call. Yeah, yeah. That's and, and that's exactly what you know. My feeling is is it's it's his bailiwick. I'm going to let him do what yes. he thinks is the appropriate thing. It is not part of the project, though. So, 
All right, that's what I've got. All right, we were told at the last meeting that there had been some response on the... Yeah, they said that they would have their um, maintenance done by the end of next month. So September? So end of September. So written commitment of performance of required maintenance is enough to stave off. So then what's next after that? So the maintenance gets completed, and then what happens? What does the town do to ensure that that road's not going to fall apart anymore? That's out of my scope of practice. Uh, no, I I, 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 like, I it feels the, like we're the, dotting the, I's and crossing T's here, but the short no, answer is I don't know. Problem. I th well, it, the idea is we were brought into it as this is potentially something that is contributing to the problem. So we do what we can to resolve what is within our sphere of of right. influence. Yeah, assigned with um, permits, yeah. And then if. I believe the DPW director is independently looking at what the impact of the other water sources or the, the genesis of the other water source. Uh, if he's a not able to determine that, uh, I don't know what happens uh, as far as legal aspect goes from there. I think the selectmen probably have some decisions to make on that. Uh, as far as the condition of the road, I would expect that the town would continue to work to ensure that the integrity of the road remains and that you know prior to any final construction of it that it, it it's not going to be compromised i think there's probably a, a variety of different options as far as uh, retaining or slowing down the volume of water that's coming off and what those are a you know i wouldn't want to speculate mostly because i'm not an engineer but i think that there's some things that could be done uh, and what the cost or where they can be done, who would do them, again, I think is still undetermined. Okay. Economic development. Well, you went to the same meeting I did. Um, town's still working with um, the Lunenburg Business Association uh, to develop a map of Lunenburg and you know how it, how Lunenburg connects back to its business community and foster some general relationship um, I spoke with Karen Chapman she said probably uh, towards the end of September she'd be back to see the board about the permitting guidebook uh, she should have a draft for us by then uh, there have been some staff reductions at MRPC so uh, their workloads have increased a little bit, uh, and it's about where we are with that. All right. Well, from what I gained from tonight's meeting, um, that uh, in about a month and a half, the Lunenburg Business Association has gained a following of 130-something, 37 people on Facebook. There is a Facebook page for Lunenburg Business Association now. Um, they had determined that there were, f and I believe this was the MRP, MRPC research, that there are 512 businesses in the town, which is darn near 5% of the population. It, number, numbers to numbers. Um, it's considerable. Um, I was surprised. Um, and that's about it I have for that. Um, and then 8.3 Board of Appeals. That's just uh, the special permit time frames. Are we going to try to go back to oh. fall town meeting and we certainly can? That? I think we should. I think be we a should, little. We should better be. prepared. I don't know how much better prepared I can be, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering what we can do for public outreach between now and then, because it's it's obviously a problem to the people who serve on this board. Correct. Well, it's 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 obviously a problem to people that deal with the, the dealings of this board. I think there was a, a misconception, uh, and I, disagree. I think it's just a matter of, of having a bit more counter to that misconception. My recollection at town meeting was there wasn't much 
presented about what the state policy was. Correct. Like, there wasn't. Can we? We can. Yeah, we can get a slide of slide, what the yeah is. something to just mm -hmm. so we can kind of set the stage for it. All right. All right. Um, board comments or concerns? Um, well, I guess it, I have a quick comment. One is um, I'd like to see more of the public come out for the marijuana discussion. So I don't know what we can do to generate some feedback there, whether it's, you know, a post on Facebook just announcing the meeting, not mm -hmm. getting into some sort of political discussion well, yeah. discussing Lunenburg, but essentially just, you know, we can post it on the town's Facebook and yeah. Yeah. Um, to, and if we do take that approach of having, you know, each meeting, we focus on Which, one topic. Yeah, can notice what data is for what meeting. Yeah, and hopefully we can kind of um, get people's input on areas that concern them specifically. That would be good. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned about charter review and our representation on that committee because it is an important part of the town and, um, yeah, where we... Our representative hasn't attended two out of the three meetings and hasn't attended any of our meetings since he was reappointed. I'm a little bit concerned that we're not well represented there. Um, so I don't know where we go with that, but I feel like it's hard to represent this board appropriately if A, you're not at the meeting, and B, you don't come here and provide feedback. So, wherever we go with that. Valid concern. Um, I have uh, one item, just, uh, it's related to, uh, it's related to planning, but also a little bit uh, related to education, just something that I've noticed in my participation online. Um, and I just wanted to make sure everybody understood the difference between an easement uh, and land ownership because I've been involved in discussions where uh, people are propagating that they're basically one and the same and referring to an exchange of land for an easement as a land swap. Um, and I wanted to make sure everyone understood that when you own land, you can do what you want with the land as long as you're in compliance with the land regulations. But an easement is the right to use a property for a specified purpose, and that purpose is established when the easement is established, and the users of that easement have no control over changing that easement over time. It's a, it's a one-time establishment, and even if you have permission to use it for a specific purpose and you want to change that purpose, you have no control of it because the land is still owned by the original owner where the easement is established. And so I just wanted to, to make sure that uh, people of the town understood that there is a difference between ownership of land being exchanged for ownership of land and ownership of land being exchanged for an easement to access land. That's it. Another valid point. And I got nothing. Move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks.